Hello, Namaskar and a very good evening to all the viewers watching our session out there. This is Simran Singh and you are watching this particular live interactive session of NCERT on eVidya channel number 6 to 12. Besides, we have so many different mediums through which you all can connect with us and you can participate in our live interactive sessions with the help of your queries, your questions and also by typing your feedback and messages in the comment section of our YouTube channel. That you all know, it is NCRT official. So it's around 4 p.m. on your watch and regularly from 4 till 5, we come up with our special sessions for all of you. And let me also bring to your notice and at the same time, invite you to the 5 days online training session by CIET NCRT in collaboration with Indian Institute of Mass Communication and it is on media literacy. We all know that media <coughs> literacy education is a key 21st century skill which teaches students to apply critical thinking to media, information or any sorts of messages that we receive. And in today's era when we are bombarded with information from almost everywhere, it is very important for us to verify and validate the facts and media literacy plays a pivotal role here. Also the concept of media literacy is crucial to the health and well-being of the individual and in today's world it's an integral part of our daily lives. So here we have our five days online training session for all of you on media literacy and today is the first day of online training session on 20th of February where we are going to throw more light on media literacy, policy perspective concept, need and scope. So let me also provide you a brief of what we are going to discuss in the following days. So today it has just commenced and we are going to conclude this training session on 24th of February. That would be the fifth day of our online training sessions. So the topic for today would be media literacy, the need and the scope, the policy pers uh, perspective and the concept. Tomorrow we are going to discuss on media literacy, competency and skills. On the third day, we will shed more light on advertising literacy and on the fourth day of this training, uh, we will guide you more on teaching learning in media and information literacy and on our concluding day, that is on 24th of February, we will discuss more on media literacy and non-violence communication. So viewers, just after we conclude these uh, training sessions, we have our post-session activity for all of you but uh, we will discuss it in the later segment of this particular session and I will also guide you how you can log into our website and get to know all the information about these five days online training session. I am delighted to inform you that uh, providing us more guidance and insights into today's session we are joined by three panelists. So before introducing you to the panelists here is an important piece of information regarding G20 for all of you. We are proud that India assumed the G20 presidency and will convene the G20 leader summit for the first time in the country in this year, that is 2023. The nation is deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism. India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her <coughs> history as it seeks to play a very major role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of everyone and in doing so manifest the true spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam or the world is one family. So let's get back to our conversation and allow me to introduce you with our esteemed panelists for today's conversation. Here in the studio we are joined by Dr. Amit Ranjan sir. Namaskar sir. Good evening, we welcome you. Evening, sir is assistant professor at CIET NCERT. He is also a writer and a poet. His current books are a poetry collection, not of juggernaut and a non-fiction work about John Lang, who was the lawyer of Rani of Chansi. He has been a recipient of Fulbright Fellowship three times, as well as three fellowships to Australia. We welcome you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, I am honored to inform you that here in the conversation, we are also joined by the Director General of Indian Institute of Mass Communication, New Delhi, Professor Sanjay Dvivedi, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, ji. Sir, we welcome you in the conversation with open arms. Well, you need no introduction, but kindly allow me to take our viewers across your journey. Professor Dvedi is a well-known Indian journalist. 
editor, writer, columnist, media guru, academic administrator and communication expert. During his journalism career spanning over a decade and a half, he has been associated with various notable media organizations. Further, he has served as the Vice Chancellor and Registrar of Makhanlal Chaturvedi National University of Journalism and Communication situated in Bhopal. He is currently a member of the Governing Council and Society of the Film and Television Institute of India, FTII Pune. Professor Dvivedi is an avid writer and over 3000 pieces penned by him on political, social and media subjects have been published in major national newspapers and publications. So we are honored to have you here with us in today's conversation. Let me also introduce our viewers to the third speaker of today's program, Professor Anubhuti Yadav. Namaskar ma'am, we welcome you as well and uh, ma'am is the head at Department of New Media and Technology at the Indian Institute of Mass Communication. She teaches new media, data journalism, advertising and public relations. Besides, she is the co-author of the Indian edition of Media Literacy, key to interpreting media messages and new media <coughs> journalism. She is also an advisor to Media Ownership Monitor India project, an initiative by Reporters Without Border to map ownership patterns in media industry, BBC, Young Reporters Program and Fact Shala, India's largest media and information literacy network. Besides, she is also a member of the Academic Advisory Committee of 200 plus PME with their DTH TV channels and is on the board of directors of the Digital International Media Literacy Education Project. We welcome all the three panelists in the conversation and here I would like to take the moment to welcome all our viewers. So throughout this panel discussion, if you have any of the queries, then feel free to write down to us in the comment section of NCRT official. If you are watching this particular live telecast through television, then here is a contact number that is flashing on your screens. So feel free to give us a call in case of doubts at this number. It is 8800440559. And for these five days online training sessions running on media literacy, we also have our mail ID. It is training.helpdesk at the rate cret.nic.in. So you can also reach to us through any other medium that you see over there. So let's open this conversation on media literacy, policy, perspective, concept, need and scope. So in the first place, I'll request um, Sir to apprise our viewers more about today's topic <coughs> and to open the program uh, for everyone. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. And uh, so today we are talking about media literacy and this is the opening um, session. And we have two media stalwarts uh, with us, Professor Dwedi and uh, Professor Anubhuti Yadav. Um, so I'd just like to uh, open the session with um, a brief idea conceptually, and of course our two stalwarts will um, help us um, uh, through it. So the whole idea of uh, media literacy is, is that uh, now we have to move beyond the idea of literacy because we are consumed by media or rather engulfed by media, whether it is at a macro level or a micro level, whether it is um, uh, the social media we interact with, um, a one to one uh, communication like WhatsApp or um, other social media like Facebook, Instagram or the large conventional mainstream media which is also 24 hour news channels and newspapers and so on and so forth. So there is a sort of an engulfing and our world is largely mediated. Um, uh, by media. So there is no escape from it and um, so uh, it is essential that there is literacy about uh, media in schools um, and um, at all levels of um, education. Um, so of course one has to uh, learn about the pros and cons and how to navigate through these various uh, media. I would like to um, uh, take the conceptual point as, as a point of um, departure and, and some theoretical points to, um, um, uh, to understand what is happening in our world. And media theorists as our specialists also would, would later um, ratify, um, force, 
foresaw long ago in, in the 50s and the 60s various media theorists of how media is going to uh, um, shape up. So, for example, there is um, Marshall McLuhan in the 1960s uh, who has got a very interesting set of theses in, in his first book Understanding Media, the Extensions of Man and he, uh, the, uh, the subtitle of the book is Extensions of Man which, which clearly shows uh, what his vision is that it is indeed literally extension of man as we see today um, our mobile phones, our gadgets and um, so on and so forth. In this book um, he uses a very powerful aphorism uh, uh, a phrase called the medium is the message um, and which various other theorists have also uh, worked on later. So, it is very in interesting idea that medium is the message. So, in the subsequent days we are going to say that we are going to talk about the messages that um, media delivers to it, how to filter it, how to navigate through it, how to uh, um, you, you know use child control, um, how teenagers should be sensitive um, and aware of what to do, what not to do etc. But Marshall McLuhan is saying something else that the medium itself is the message, that the nature of that medium is not merely the messenger, but it is a site in itself. The nature of the media decides the kind of messaging that will be done. So, a newspaper will obviously be different um, from mass media like television. And we are talking about 1960s over here. That television would be more corruptible than the print media, A because it is for larger masses, B because it has got reach through advertisement and the more the advertisement there will be more money and more the scope for corruption, more the scope for tampering which print media would not have. So, this is just an example and with the media explosion one can um, think of, of the myriad ways in which um, this can be um, um, uh, thought through. And so, the nature of the media itself is something that needs to be studied along with the message um, that it gives. So, I gave you the example of television for example. Now, look at um, Instagram, the name itself suggests instant gratification, Instagramming and so this is led to image filters um, which has led to body consciousness amongst various people because people use filters to post their images. It also leads to a lot of loneliness because people post their own pictures, selfies. And so, the latent narcissism of the world which is also latent loneliness of the world is, is quite manifest and it mediates, it creates a kind of a peer pressure to operate in um, uh, certain ways. And so, these different media that we uh, interact with uh, create their own messaging. So, what we need to do uh, fundamentally is to understand how these various uh, sites of media are uh, or how these various medium are uh, what is what is their nature and how uh, to navigate through them, how to understand them. The decoding and the coding also uh, a very uh, powerful uh, tool these days is WhatsApp which has uh, um, created a lot of micro and macro problems and solutions. It can lead to rumors, it can also lead to personal solutions, you can consult a doctor, etcetera, etcetera. Also, personal relationships, etcetera. So, the nature of the medium itself uh, creates its, its, its patterns, which, which is very important to understand. And so, there are two things uh, decoding and coding. So, decoding what the message is, what is written between the line is very important. Um, there are many forwarded messages which people do not bother to decode, which they take it without a grain of salt uh, as it is, not wondering where the message may have originated from. Who would have the time to write 500 words, 300 words about something, what are the sources from which it is written, nobody thinks about that. Nobody, the processing time is too uh, fast, um, because there is no thinking time involved and which is why it is still said it is still advised to read books because then you actively engage your imagination in terms of thinking. And, and so, the various kind of media have to be understood in terms of decoding not just one what the message is, what its origins could be, what is written between the lines, what could be the truth value of it. And the other is, is the medium itself, is the medium itself viable, is the medium itself um, um, you know, factful enough 
um, or is it prone uh, to misinformation, disinformation, uh, its speed, etc. Um, and the other aspect is quoting, which is when we are disseminating information on, on media and social media, whether we are conscientious, whether we are biased. And of course, uh, there is a content bias as um, Harold in Innes um, uh, suggested in his work about content bias. And uh, that is, I, I will not go into the deep theoretical, theoretical aspects of uh, what content bias is, but one understands by the term itself uh, that the media and its operators would have a certain content bias. So, it is very important in today's day and world to be very um, informed, um, aware and also uh, like a good student of history or literature to be able to sift um, information, to be able to critically apprise it analyze it and not get swayed um, away with uh, let us say uh, emotion uh, or uh, form very strong opinions just by the, the content that we are receiving at such a rapid pace. Um, I think I will leave it there. Um, I think that is a good uh, introduction to of course, um, uh, yeah. you have laid a strong foundation of this session. Thank you for Thank the you valuable so information that you have shared with us. And uh, moving ahead in the conversation, uh, I would like to invite Professor Sanjay Dwedi, sir, in the conversation. And sir, through your extensive experience in the field of media, I will request you to shed more light on the aspects of media literacy and also the work done by IIMC in the field of media literacy. Uh, Dr. Amit Ranjanji, Professor Anbhuti Yadavji. जान के खुशी हुई कि NCRT जैसे बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण संस्थान ने पांच दिनों का ट्रेनिंग सेशन रखा है और अनुभूति जी को आमंत्रित किया है कि वे इस विषय पर लोगों को बताएं मुझे लगता है कि डॉक्टर अनुभूति यादव से श्रेष्ठ और योग्य चयन नहीं हो सकता इस विषय पर बातचीत करने के लिए वो इस विषय की न सिर्फ जानकार है बल्कि प्रैक्टिसनर भी हैं और बहुत अच्छे तरीके से उन्होंने देश भर में मीडिया लिटरेसी के बारे में लोगों को जागरूक जागरूक किया है और क्योंकि हमारे यहाँ मीडिया लिटरेसी को उस तरह से नहीं देखा जाता नहीं समझा जाता क्योंकि डिजिटल एरा के बाद इसका अपने आप में बहुत इम्पोर्टेंस बढ़ गया है अनुभूति जी ने इस विषय को न सिर्फ समझा बल्कि टीचर्स को जो ट्रेनर्स हैं उनको इसके लिए तैयार किया तो मैं एन को बहुत बधाई देना चाहता हूँ कि वे आई के साथ जुड़े ये तो बड़ी बात है पर उन्होंने अनुभूति जी का इसके लिए चयन किया और मुझे लगता है वे निश्चित रूप से पांच दिनों में आपको बहुत ही योग्य मार्गदर्शन देंगे कोरोना महामारी के दौरान एक शब्द बहुत प्रचलित हुआ और उसके अनेक परिणाम और दुष्परिणाम देखने को मिले ये शब्द है इन्फोडेमिक <coughs> इस शब्द का मतलब है अतिशय सूचना आम बोलचाल की भाषा में मैं कहूँ सूचनाओं के विस्फोट से इसका है जब बहुत सारी सूचनाएं हमारे पास आती हैं ये तय करना मुश्किल हो जाता है कि हम किस सूचना को चुने किस छोड़ दें किस भरोसा करें किस पे न करें ऐसी स्थिति में एक डिस्कोर्स पैदा होता है यही डिस्कोर्स मीडिया और इंफॉर्मेशन लिटरेसी है मीडिया लिटरेसी का जो डिस्कोर्स है वो कोरोना काल में खड़ा नहीं हुआ टेक्नोलॉजी का जो डेवलपमेंट हुआ उसके साथ साथ सूचनाओं का अंबार बढ़ता गया और कहा जाता है कि आवश्यकता आविष्कार की जननी होती इन सूचनाओं के अंबार में से अपने काम की सूचना को खोजना उसकी विश्वसनीयता को परखना इसकी जरूरत नाइन्टीज के दशक में शुरू हुई और उससे एक नया कॉन्सेप्ट आया जिसको मीडिया लिटरेसी कहते हैं फेक न्यूज हमें पता है कि अपने आप में बहुत बड़ा बिजनेस बन गया है डिजिटल मीडिया ने इसको और गति दी है ऐसे में मीडिया लिटरेसी की जरूरत बहुत ज्यादा बढ़ जाती है आज हम एक ऐसे समय में रह रहे हैं जहां पे सूचनाओं का अंबार है और रोजमर्रा की जो बातचीत है उसमें पोस्ट टूथ जैसी बातचीत या पोस्ट टूथ जैसा शब्द जो है शामिल हो गया है अब पोस्ट टूथ क्या है जब कोई बात सत्य से परे हो जाए जब सच और झूठ में अंतर समाप्त हो जाए जब सही और गलत का विचार फैक्ट्स के आधार पर नॉलेज के आधार पर ना हो बल्कि इमोशंस के आधार पर होने लगे उसको हम पोस्ट कहते हैं और ऐसे दौर में इंफॉर्मेशन को लेकर के सूचनाओं को लेकर के लोगों में जागरूकता बढ़ाना बहुत जिम्मेदारी का काम है अपने मतलब के लिए बातें करने वाले लोग हैं अपना प्रचार भी करते हैं पर डिजिटल दुनिया में जिस तरह से पोलिटिकल सोशल इकोनॉमिक इशूज पे झूठी खबरें आ रही हैं वो बहुत चिंता में डालने वाली सोशल मीडिया और मैसेजिंग नेटवर्क की वजह से 
बड़े पैमाने पर सूचना और प्रचार प्रसार अब सिर्फ अलीट वर्ग या मीडिया के लोगों तक सीमित नहीं है बल्कि इस नेटवर्क के चलते सूचनाओं के प्रवाह को रोकना लगभग नामुमकिन हो गया है ऐसे माहौल में लोगों के पास ऐसे टूल्स होने चाहिए ऐसी जानकारियां होनी चाहिए जिससे वे उनका विश्लेषण कर सकें और यहाँ तक कि उन सूचनाओं को खारिज भी कर सकें इसके लिए हमें बहुत कम उम्र से बच्चों को जागरूक करने की जरूरत है और मुझे खुशी है कि एन ने यह उपक्रम प्रारंभ किया है क्योंकि सूचनाओं की जो बमबारी है गैजेट्स का इस्तेमाल है हम अपने बच्चों को रोक नहीं पा रहे हैं इसके लिए हमें स्कूली जो कोर्सेज हैं पढ़ाने के जो हमारे तरीके हैं हमारी पेडोगोजी है शिक्षा की जो व्यवस्था है उसमें सब चीजों में हमें मीडिया लिटरेसी को अनिवार्य रूप से शामिल करना होगा वरना हम तथ्य और काल्पनिक बातों में बच्चों को फर्क करना नहीं सिखा पाएंगे आप देखिए स्मार्टफोन और टैबलेट की संख्या बढ़ने के कारण आज के जो नौजवान हैं उन तक सूचनाओं की पहुंच बहुत आसान हो गई बच्चों तक टू जीरो में स्टेनफोर्ड हिस्ट्री एजुकेशन ग्रुप की एक रिपोर्ट आई उसमें पता चला कि अलग अलग सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म का इस्तेमाल करने वाले जो छात्र हैं जो विद्यार्थी हैं उसमें 80 परसेंट अस्सी परसेंट छात्र जो है विज्ञापन और खबरों के बीच में फर्क नहीं कर पाते मतलब यह है कि छात्रों को जिस पैमाने पर गलत सूचनाओं से जूझना पड़ रहा है उसमें सच झूठ का फर्क करने में खुद को मुश्किल में पाते हैं हालांकि कुछ देशों ने इस दिक्कत को काफी पहले पहचान लिया और वह इसके समाधान भी कर रहे हैं बार बार हम अभी आजकल दिल्ली में काफी फिनलैंड का जिक्र हो रहा है फिनलैंड के स्कूल सिस्टम का और फिनलैंड एक ऐसा देश है जिसको बेहतरीन सरकारी स्कूलों का वाला देश कहा जाता है टीचर्स की बहुत इज्जत है वहां पे आज भी जगमोहन सिंह राजपूत जो आपके डायरेक्टर है उनका बहुत अच्छा आर्टिकल अखबारों में छपा है कि वर्ष 2014 के बाद से फिनलैंड में झूठी खबरों के खिलाफ एक कैंपेन शुरू किया गया जिसका मकसद ही था अपने स्टूडेंट्स में एनालिसिस की क्षमता को बढ़ाना समझ को बढ़ाना और दो की इंटरनेशनल सिविक एंड सिविलाइजेशन एजुकेशन स्टडी की जो रिपोर्ट है वो बताती है कि फिनलैंड में एट्टी जो शिक्षक हैं वो छात्रों में विश्लेषणात्मक और स्वतंत्र सोच को बढ़ावा देने को जरूरी काम मानते हैं हमारे यहाँ इसको एक समस्या के रूप में अभी स्वीकार ही नहीं किया गया ये बहुत बड़ा संकट है फैक्ट चेकिंग यानी सच्ची और झूठी खबरों का फर्क बताने वाले संस्थाओं और जानकारों के साथ मिलकर के फिनलैंड अपने विद्यार्थियों को हुनरमंद बनाने का काम कर रहा है ताकि वे झूठी खबरों की पहचान कर सके इसके लिए छात्रों के साथ मौजूदा मुद्दों पर न सिर्फ बातचीत होती है बल्कि सवाल पूछने का जो कल्चर है उसको बढ़ावा दिया जाता है भारत के जो शिक्षण संस्थान हैं उनको इस तरह के काम जरूर करने चाहिए आप देखिए सितंबर 2018 में अमेरिका के जो सरकारी स्कूल हैं कॉलेजेस हैं वहां पर मीडिया साक्षरता को बढ़ाने के लिए एक विधेयक लाया गया आदरणीय अनुभूति मैडम भी अमेरिका से इसकी ट्रेनिंग लेके आई हैं तो उसके जरिए जो स्टेट्स के जो एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट थे उन्होंने मीडिया साक्षरता को बढ़ाने और शिक्षकों को उसके मुताबिक ट्रेनिंग को लगभग अनिवार्य बना दिया गया कई स्टेट्स में आज भारत में कौन सी सूचना सच है कौन सी झूठ इसका पता लगाना मुश्किल है उस शिक्षा संस्थानों को तो आप छोड़ दीजिए स्कूली स्तर पर भी मीडिया एजुकेशन को लेकर के मीडिया लिटरेसी को लेकर के कोई बातचीत नहीं होती शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में आईसीटी आई यानी इंफॉर्मेशन एंड कम्युनिकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी का दखल तो बढ़ रहा है लेकिन कामकाजी तकनीकी क्षमता को साक्षरता मानने की भूल हमको नहीं करनी चाहिए आज अनेक सरकारें टेबलेट बांटने के लिए तैयार है कुछ कंप्यूटर बांट रही है कुछ टेबलेट बांट रही है तो ठीक है आप टैबलेट बांटते हैं कंप्यूटर बांटते हैं मोबाइल भी बांट दीजिए हम तो कहते हैं एप्पल का फोन बांट दीजिए कोई समस्या नहीं आपको बजट हो सकता है बांटने का पर हमारे पास इन चीजों की उपलब्धता का मतलब नहीं कि मैं इसको जानता भी हूं इसके इस्तेमाल को मैं जानता हूं या इसको मैं इसको मैं समझ सकता हूँ इसलिए हमें ये देखना पड़ेगा कि इसका रेफरेंस क्या है और क्या वह नैतिक होने की शर्तों को पूरा कर रही है भारत की जो स्कूली एजुकेशन है कॉलेज की एजुकेशन है बहुत हद तक सिलेबस पूरा करने तक सीमित है वो छात्रों को सच्ची झूठी खबरों का फर्क सिखाने की बड़ी जिम्मेदारी लेने को तैयार नहीं है क्योंकि सबसे जो बड़ी बात है कि अभी तक प्रशासनिक स्तर पर यह स्वीकार ही नहीं किया गया कि ये झूठी खबरों की समस्या कितनी बड़ी है जब हम समस्या को स्वीकार ही नहीं करते तो उसके समाधान की तरफ बढ़ने की बात ही अलग है अधिकतर शिक्षक डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी को अच्छी तरह नहीं समझते इस अभियान में सबसे बड़ी बाधा यही है हमारे यहाँ अखबारों में छपे हुए शब्दों को या टीवी पर जो कही गई बात है उसको जो है आंख बंद करके लोग विश्वास करते हैं व्हाट्सएप पे जो मैसेजेस आ रहे हैं हम धड़ाधड़ आगे बढ़ाते जा रहे हैं एक तरह से इन पे जो चीजें आ रही हैं उसको हम सच मानने की एक तरह से हमने एक सामाजिक संस्कृति पैदा कर ली है इस पे हमें बहुत काम करना पड़ेगा और इसलिए मीडिया साक्षरता को कोर्स का हिस्सा हमको बनाना पड़ेगा अपने अपने स्टेट्स में हमको इसके कारगर मॉड्यूल तैयार करने पड़ेंगे ट्रेनिंग मॉड्यूल तैयार करने पड़ेंगे सारा आधार को उसकी समीक्षा करनी पड़ेगी और दूसरी बात एक छात्रों के विकास में माता पिता और सीनियर सिटीजन की बड़ी भूमिका है 
बच्चों में इंटरनेट के बढ़ते इस्तेमाल के बावजूद अलग अलग अध्ययन हमें बता रहे हैं कि सूचना के मामले में बच्चे जो है परिवार के सदस्यों पर सबसे अधिक भरोसा करते हैं इसलिए शिक्षकों की ट्रेनिंग के साथ साथ पेरेंट्स को भी उनको सूचनाओं को लेकर के अभ्यास हमें कराना पड़ेगा तीसरी बात यह है कि हमें कोई तयशुदा कोर्स नहीं बनाना है जहां से सूचनाएं आ रही हैं वे किसी लीक पे नहीं चल रही हैं इसलिए ट्रेनिंग में भी समय समय पर बदलाव करना पड़ेगा सूचनाओं की बदलती दुनिया के मुताबिक ट्रेनिंग की व्यवस्थाएं खड़ी करनी पड़ेगी छात्रों को सिखाने का यह मतलब नहीं है कि अखबारों में पैसा लेकर छपे गए कंटेंट की पहचान कैसे करें उनमें ज्यादातर को ट्विटर व्हाट्सएप के जरिए सूचनाएं पहुंच रही है अखबारों से नहीं देखते ये भी चीजें हमें देखनी पड़ेगी किस प्रकार हम मीडिया साक्षरता को एक आगे लेकर के जा सकते हैं हर शताब्दी अपनी किसी न किसी चीज के लिए जानी जाती है इक्कीसवीं शताब्दी इंटरनेट और सोशल मीडिया की शताब्दी मानी जा रही है और इसलिए हमें इसके लिए विशेष तैयारी करने की जरूरत है आप देखिए कि अगर हम इस चीज के लिए तैयार नहीं होते हैं तो कितने बड़े खतरे के सामने होंगे और मुझे लगता है कि आपने बिल्कुल सही वक्त पर शुरुआत की है जिसमें इस तरह से हम चीजों को कर, कर रहे हैं क्योंकि तो हम देख रहे हैं खतरा कितना बड़ा है माइक्रोसॉफ्ट की एक सर्वे रिपोर्ट बताया गया दो में कि भारत में इंटरनेट उपभोक्ताओं को फर्जी खबरों का सबसे अधिक सामना करना पड़ता है ये रिपोर्ट बता रही है कि 64 परसेंट इंडियंस को फर्जी खबरों का सामना करना पड़ता है भारतीय कितने बड़े खतरे के सामने खड़े हैं इसलिए चिंता की बात है कि वैश्विक स्तर पे आंकड़ा 57 परसेंट का हम सब सिक्सटी परसेंट पर खड़े हैं और इसलिए ये भी हमें देखना पड़ेगा कि फर्जी खबरों के प्रचार प्रसार में परिवार और दोस्त किस तरह अहम भूमिका निभा रहे हैं और इस नाते हमको जब समय ऐसा खराब आ गया है वक्त इतना खराब है जब फैक्ट और फिक्शन एक घाट पर पानी पी रहे हैं और फैक्ट और फिक्शन अगर एक घाट पर पानी पीते हैं तो सच सहम कह रहा जाता सत्य सहम कह रहता फैक्ट को कोई पूछता नहीं इसलिए हमें इस बात को देखना पड़ेगा अमेरिका के बहुत मशहूर राइटर हैं निकोलस कार वो अपनी किताब द सेलोज में लिखते हैं इंटरनेट के इस्तेमाल के कारण हम अपने दिमाग का प्रयोग बहुत कम करने लगे हैं क्योंकि हर सामग्री इंटरनेट पर उपलब्ध है इस वजह से तार्किक विश्लेषण करने की हमारी क्षमता घट रही है हम चीज़ों पर आसानी से भरोसा करने लगे हैं आज के इस मौके पर आपने मुझे बुलाया बातचीत करने का मौका दिया और मैं उम्मीद करता हूं कि ये सेशन जो है पाँच दिनों का बहुत ही सफल होगा और मैं अनुभूति जी को और आप पूरी टीम को जो इस काम में लगी हुई है एन सी आर टी को उसको अपनी शुभकामनाएं देता हूं अपनी वाणी को विराम देता हूं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद नमस्कार सर मीडिया साक्षरता से जुड़ी हुई बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण जानकारियाँ आज आपने हमारे साथ साझा की हैं और इस मंच के माध्यम से बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण पहलुओं को आपने हमारे सामने प्रकट करने की कोशिश की है सर आपका धन्यवाद करते हैं हमारे मार्गदर्शन के लिए और आपके समय के लिए चर्चा को आगे बढ़ाते हैं और अब मैं प्रोफेसर अनुभूति यादव से निवेदन करती हूँ टू डिस्कस एंड शेड मोर लाइट ऑन द नीड एंड स्कोप ऑफ मीडिया लिटरेसी Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, you know, I would like to thank NCRT for collaborating with IMC on this very important issue. Uh, I think that there cannot be better collaboration than this because if you look at education, I, uh, NCRT is premier uh, institute in education, and if you talk about media education, IMC is the premier institute in media education. And now these two, uh, you know, organizations they are coming together. and i think it will play a very important role in promoting media literacy across our country so uh, i i really uh, you know felt good you know when this collaboration happened in fact my work in the field of media literacy started in 2006 when i joined ncrt and it's it's been a long journey uh, professor uh, divedi uh, dgimc said that still you know uh, people have not understood the importance of media literacy uh, but yes you know there are number of people who have been working towards it but i think the collaboration like this and you know the initiatives like this will definitely promote media literacy in the society so in my presentation what i'm going to do is i'll be focusing more on need and scope for uh, media literacy because i think that there are a lot of teachers who have joined this particular program training program they might be listening to media literacy as a concept for the first time so it needs to be explained to them you know what exactly media literacy is and why there is a need for uh, media literacy though dr amit ranjan professor divedi i mean he, they have introduced it very well why we need to be media literate but i would like to emphasize little more on this so i'll just uh, you know go through my presentation so when we talk about uh, media literacy and the need for media literacy the first and the foremost thing is uh, media is all pervasive it's everywhere 
So the moment we get up early in the morning till the time we go to sleep, you know, we are bombarded with thousands of media messages. They are coming from television in the form of serial, news, there are, they are different advertisements, we're listening to number of podcasts. So there are a lot of messages which are coming to us, you know, through different formats and through, you know, different uh, mediums. So uh, since it's all pervasive, you know, that's why we need to be media literate. Another very important thing is that, you know, when we talk about literacy, and nobody says that, you know, uh, you know, literacy is something which is not needed. We have all understood the importance of literacy. NCRT is working towards it. But, you know, if you look at the definition of literacy, what does it mean? What does it say? It says it's an ability to read and write. So till the time information was available in the form of printed text, I think it was okay to have this definition, which is like media literacy is an ability to read and write. But nowadays, you know, everyone is receiving information from a wide variety of sources. So it becomes very important that media literacy, uh, you know, and we need to redefine the definition of literacy actually. So it's not just printed text, we should be able to read and write messages using wide variety of, you know, media formats. So uh, that, that's one thing, because, you know, uh, till now we've been talking about literacy, but we need to bring in uh, video content, audio content also as part of uh, literacy. That is something which we have not done. So that's why, you know, it is extremely important to have uh, media literacy uh, in our uh, curriculum. Or maybe like we need to define the definition of literacy to include, you know, all these literacy in that. Now, since we're talking about uh, media literacy, it's extremely important to understand media ecosystem in India. Uh, when we talk about media ecosystem in India, it's very vibrant. And I think there is no country in the world wherein we have such vibrant media ecosystem the way we have in India. Uh, if you look at the newspapers, you know, the India is the world's largest print market. Can you imagine a country from a country, 70,000 newspapers are being published, you know, uh, uh, every year. This is a huge number. If you, if you look at the satellite channels, we have more than 800 plus satellite channels. More than 100, uh, you know, news channels are there. And if you talk about television, it's the largest segment in media and entertainment industry. Uh, if you look at the internet and if you talk about the internet users, um, we have more than 800 million people who are connected with the internet. Now, when I'm saying 800 million people who are connected uh, with the internet, they're not only consumers of media messages through internet, they're also, uh, you know, potential producers of media messages. And we always say any person who has access to smartphone is also roaming around with a newsroom in his or her pocket because if the person has access to smartphone and it you know it's linked with an internet that person can not only create messages they can publish they can also disseminate the content so uh, th this is like the number when we talk about the internet users in our country movies cinema i mean huge in number i mean thousands of you know films are being produced every year if you look at you know all the uh, you know media uh, all the uh, industry for example not only bollywood and others uh, also so this is like media ecosystem in india if you look at the radio we have 100 and, uh, 1023 operational radio stations 385 fm radio station 479 ar ar stations 39 community radio stations. If you look at the online gaming, which is the field uh, which is growing at a very fast pace, and especially this happened at the time of the pandemic, because you know the content, uh, you know, uh, pipeline dried up. You know, when we talk about television and all, but yes, you know, there are a lot of people who were playing games uh, because they were limited to their homes. So, uh, and there are 500 million people who are playing these online games who these people are, they are young people, right? So they, they are students, you know, in the school. So they are playing the games and at the same time, they are learning a lot through those games. And when you talk about social media, uh, you know, 467 million people are there on social media. They are on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on TikTok, it's banned now, but we have seen with the TikTok, you know, how people were making their careers using, you know, these uh, particular platforms. Instagram is there. So this is the media ecosystem. And what does it mean? This means that 
we are receiving messages from all these platforms. And in these messages which are coming from all these platforms, they are huge in numbers. And that's why we need to be media and information literate. And as Professor Sanjit Devedi said very rightly, that uh, many a times it happens that when we see something on television or in television news, or when we read something in newspaper, we always feel that, oh, I've read it in the newspaper or watched it in a uh, television news, so this must be accurate. But we need to have that critical thinking. We also need to question content which is coming from all these media houses also. And we have seen in the past that you know these media houses also fall for misinformation number of times. So that is one, because the number is huge. Messages are coming from different directions. That's why we need to be uh, media and information literate. Another reason why we need to be uh, media literate and why media as a subject should be part of the school curriculum. It is part of school curriculum, but we need to uh, you know, work a lot on that particular front. So another thing is that if you look at the media and entertainment sector, it's 1.61 trillion industry. That means a um, lot of job opportunities for students, a lot of work in different sectors, in different, uh, you know, media, you have newspapers, you have television, uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, radio, you have digital, everywhere, you know, the jobs, there are multiple jobs are there. And people in the school system, and especially like the teachers and the parents, they need to understand that students have different interests. And we should not limit them only to, you know, science or, you know, mathematics, uh, and then, you know, discouraging them uh, you know, when they show their interest in the field like media and entertainment. So if we start talking about this, you know, early uh, in schools, maybe like, you know, we can have, you know, very good people who can join media and entertainment sector. So it's, it's, it's a huge uh, job market also. Another very important thing, you know, when, when we are talking about um, media and entertainment sector, and this is something which is very alarming. Now, look at what kids are watching. When I'm saying kids, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, 2 to 14. Uh, and this is something which came in uh, FIKI KPMG report. And it, this is kids viewership by genre. Now, if you look at this infographic, uh, most of the time, these kids and young people, they are watching content which is made for adults. And if you can see, uh, you know, uh, most of the content is like GC, which is like journal entertainment channel. Um, then, of course, like you have, uh, you know, movies, then you have news. But we have very few programs which are made for kids. So what happens? Kids are growing up watching content which is made for adult. They're not watching content which is age appropriate. There are psychologists in the country who had said that the kids are growing up fast. And the reason is because they're consuming content which is not meant for them. They're consuming content that is meant for adults. So there is a need to create a lot of such content, you know, for kids. And of course, like NCRT is doing a lot of work in that. But yes, even in the media and entertainment sector, we need to make a lot of programs for um, children. Now, um, if you talk about uh, media, and in fact, like Dr. Ranjan had um, did discuss, you know, some of the, the concepts when we talk about media effects. Um, the researchers have shown that media do have effects on its audiences. It could be light effect, it could be heavy effect, but the effect is there. And these are certain theories which we teach to our students. You know, mostly we teach these theories to our students who are doing courses in communication. But I feel that these are extremely important for each one of us to know when we start our journey in the field of media and information literacy, that all media messages, they have some sort of effect on its audiences. So for example, these two, I mean, I mean this, I have summarized all the theories in you know, one slide, but this tells about you know, the kind of impact. So when we are talking about heavy effects, you know, there are theories like magic bullet theory, there are th theories like hypodermic theory, which says that, you know, the media has a very heavy impact on, uh, on audiences and uh, it's very powerful, it's very direct uh, and, um, you know, the, the, the audiences, it is said that they are very passive, you know, they are not reacting to those particular uh, messages. Um, then there is a cultivation theory. The cultivation theory says that, you know, uh, you know, they, they think about a world uh, uh, in a way it is being projected in media. 
So for example, if the, if the children are watching a lot of violent programs, then they tend to think that you know the world is a violent place. And there are a number of researches which have been done in this particular direction. So this shows that there's a heavy impact of media messages on not only on children, but on the adults as well. Then you have limited effects. Now, limited effects, what does it mean? That, say, for example, when we talk about two-step model, it says that it's not the direct impact, but there are opinion leaders in between. So the message reaches those opinion leaders. They could be anyone. It could be teachers like you who are watching this particular program. And then you share that content or messages with your students or maybe like people in your community. So it's a two step flow. I mean, it's not directly from media to, to the people, but there are some uh, influencers or like some powerful people in between who also play an important role. Um, then you also have agenda setting. And this is something uh, which uh, uh, when we talk about political communication, we talk about a lot on agenda setting. Uh, what does it mean? It means that, you know, uh, media plays a very important role in telling people, you know, what is important and what they should be thinking about. Uh, so, for, for example, any morning, if I feel that this is an important issue, where is it coming from? Maybe like previous night, I might have watched news and in that news, I might have listened to that particular thing. So it decides, you know, what people should be thinking what should uh, they should be talking about. And then, of course, you, you do have light effects. You know, he talked about uses and gratification. So in this case, you know, um, the audiences, they are seeking content which satisfy their needs, which satisfy, you know, their purpose. So here, the audiences, they, they have that power. They exercise that power, they are empowered. But still, if you look at media messages, uh, all these media messages, they do have some sort of effect. I'll show you some pictures wherein we're talking about the impact and I'll talk about both. I'll talk about the negative as well as the uh, positive uh, media uh, impact. Now, these are the news headlines. Say, for example, six-year-old boy who loved Spider-Man uh, fell from a bedroom window after thinking he was invincible like a hero. This is like the sight from that particular scene. Nine-year-old Demory Miles dies in jump off Brooklyn apartment may have been imitating video game. This is something which came from our country between fact and fantasy. And this is what happened that, you know, there were uh, some students who kidnapped their own classmates and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the things uh, happened in such a way that they end up killing that particular boy. And when they were questioned what happened, they mentioned that, you know, they saw such thing in their favorite serial, which was CID at that point. Then Bollywood thriller inspired team to kill two senior citizens. So these are some of the uh, cases wherein we say that there's a negative impact of media. So if they see a lot of violent programs, so they also get inspired by those, those programs. But media does have a lot of positive impact also. And this is something which we have all witnessed in 2010 at the time of the Arab Spring. We know that, you know, there was like dissatisfaction among the Arab countries because of, you know, authoritative government and all. And, uh, and this started in Tunisia and then, you know, spread in different Arab countries. So this is one case which I usually share with my students. And this is about, you know, Egypt. And, um, you know, th this is the, the photograph of a boy. His name is uh, Khalid Saeed. He managed to click photograph of police officials who were confiscating drugs, uh, who were sharing drugs which they had confiscated from somewhere. And he put it up on uh, social media. He was arrested and uh, the next day when the, 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 the family members of this boy asked like where the boy is, uh, the police official said that, you know, he was a drug addict. He swallowed a pack of marijuana. He choked and he died. But when people saw the body of this boy, bruises all over, blood all over. They said that this death didn't happen because uh, he swallowed something and he choked. This death happened because he was beaten to death. And then people, you know, put up this his photograph on social media. And uh, that was the time there was this one page which we created and the name of the page was We Are All Kalapai. And that page actually became a site for the people to decide what kind of protest they're going to have against the government. And uh, of course, and after that, a lot of things happened and uh, social media played a very important role in that. 
uh, we know that the government had to step down, military took over, but that's the power of media. That's the power of media messages, and especially social media, that, you know, uh, there, there, there have been uh, occasions and there are countries where in the governments have been changed just because of, you know, these messages on um, social media. This is the photograph, this is the defining image of, you know, Syria war. Now, this is the, the picture of Alan Kurdi, and he was trying to escape Syria. Boat capsized, he died. And at that point of time, you know, this photographer clicked the photograph, and of course the photographer was also in a dilemma whether uh, she should be clicking this photograph or not. But then she said that, you know, I, I clicked this photograph because I wanted the world to listen to the scream of this dead boy. And uh, the, the impact of this was that the moment it came on social media, it became viral. Uh, it, it, it appeared in most of the newspapers and uh, of course, you know, post this, a lot of countries had opened their door for refugees. So that was the, sorry, impact which happened. This picture, again, you know, a defining picture of um, Vietnam War. So the moment we talk about Vietnam War, we talk about this particular picture. Uh, and uh, this is like... Um, known as napalm a girl you know wherein you know the forces they drop napalm uh, which is a chemical and the, the, the kids they burn their clothes and uh, you know they are you know running towards the photographer in search of water and the impact of this was that the us withdrew you know when this picture appeared in you know different uh, newspapers and all this one this many of us might have seen you know this is from south sudan right this a picture which was taken by Kevin Carter. Here's this girl moving towards, you know, the UN camp in search of food, and there is a vulture waiting right there to feed on this particular girl. And when this picture was taken and when it, it became viral, there were a lot of humanitarian aids for, for Sudan. So the whole idea is when we talk about um, media impact, there could be positive impact, there could be negative impact. And when we talk about media and information literacy, it is a set of competency which help people to maximize the advantages and minimize you know, the harmful effect of media messages. You know, this is what media and information literacy uh, in crux, you know, when, when we talk about this. And in fact, like a lot of uh, experts will be coming and will be talking about media and information literacy. But this is actually the summary, the essence of this, that we need to maximize the positive impact of media messages and minimize, you know, the harmful effect of, of that. So, uh, UNESCO came up with this one uh, book, which is called Think Critically, Click Wisely. And it talked about, you know, different um, media literacy benefits. So there are few benefits, uh, benefits, which I think both the speakers before, they have talked about it. But the first one is that when we talk about in teaching and learning processes, it equips educators with enhanced knowledge about, uh, on how to critically engage with information. Now, that is something which is extremely important. There is a lot of information and uh, of course, like, you know, uh, you need to be media literate to uh, uh, understand and to crit uh, critically engage with that information. It can self-empower people to understand the positive things. They should be in a position to use those digital tools to create the content. Uh, so that's, that's another thing. They should also understand how messages are created. They should also understand, you know, how these media organizations are functioning right so when they understand what is the function of a media organization or what is the function of a journalism then definitely like they can use their critical skills to uh, evaluate the performance of these uh, you know content providers uh, this was mentioned that it will help a lot uh, in dealing with the cases of misinformation and disinformation. Tomorrow we'll have a lot of time. We'll be talking about this thing in detail, um, that how media literacy can help in fighting misinformation and disinformation. This is also a prerequisite for other literacy. For example, when you talk about health literacy, financial literacy, science literacy, we're all talking about, you know, engaging with the information. We're all talking about, you know, that we need to have certain skills so that we can identify and navigate uh, beneficial and harmful information. So, like, whatever literacies you're talking about, it actually starts with the information literacy. 
and it enhances quality education by linking um, learning in formal learning spaces with the day-to-day -day social learning. Uh, in fact, the work which we started in the field of media and information literacy that happened after National Curriculum uh, Framework 2005, uh, wherein it was said that you have to connect knowledge with the world outside. And that's why we felt that, you know, the media is a very important part of students' lives. So let's talk about that in the classrooms uh, also. So these are such some of the benefits. And last, I'll just take a few seconds, like how this can be achieved about you know what all we should do uh, the first and the foremost thing what teachers can do one this could be integrated with the existing subjects you're teaching political science you're teaching sociology you're teaching language everywhere in each subject there is a pos possibility wherein you can um, you know integrate uh, media literacy step two should be media clubs in school you can start media clubs we have done this thing in the past uh, there, you know, when I was working with NCRT, we established around 100, uh, you know, media clubs, you know, across the schools. So that that's another way of doing it. Step three is offering media studies at class 11th and 12th. Uh, the subject is there; it's an elective subject, but not many schools are offering this elective <coughs> subject. But if we, if, we, if we think that there are a lot of jobs available, then we need to offer these subjects at, uh, you know, 11th and 12th. Step four, which is something we have done right now, we have, uh, in collaboration with CBSE, uh, worked on a textbook which is called Mass Media, Being Media Literate, and this is offered to the students from grades seven to nine. And here we are talking about, you know, all the media and information literacy, all the skills, and that is something that we, needs to be introduced in all the schools. And step five, as he said, that, you know, we need to conduct a lot of workshops, not only for teachers, but we need to conduct these workshops for the parents also, because they also need to be media and information literate. And the last point is, uh, national education policy says that we need to use young people or involve young people in the constructive public engagement. Make them uh, ambassadors of media literacy, make them understand, and then they go out, tell their parents, tell their peers, uh, go to the grassroots level and talk about, you know, media literacy. So let them be the ambassadors of uh, media literacy. I think if we do it this way, then uh, we'll be able to make the difference in the society. And this is the time when media and information literacy is needed the most. At the time of the pandemic, we have seen, and post-pandemic also, we know that there are a lot of fake information, misinformation, disinformation, and MIL is the only solution for this. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing these valuable information with all our viewers and discussing at length about media literacy. Here, I would like to inform all our learners that we are left by the last two minutes in our conversation. So let me quickly take you through the website of CIET and CRT. So let's have a look at our screens. And this is the home page of our website. All you have to do is type www.ciet.nic.in. And in order to obtain all the information regarding this particular training session, just click on workshop slash training under events. And uh, this will guide you to this page. The three kind of activities are already there. So for this activity, we'll get to know more on online training on media literacy. So due to paucity of time, we might, not, uh, we might not be able to discuss it at length, but uh, just giving you a rough review of our website and uh, the program schedule. Here we have the day, the day, the title of the session against the name of our resource persons. And for day one, the banner has been uploaded. For any reason, if you have missed our videos, then the video links will be uploaded here itself. And uh, here is how you can participate in the post session activity. There are few steps laid down for you. So we will be discussing about these steps tomorrow. And uh, let me also apprise you that your feedback is very important for us. So do write to us through this Google form that is right over here. It's in a blue link and it's accessible for everyone. And for any queries, you know the different mediums through which you can connect with us. So here I would like to extend a word of thanks to all the three panelists who have communicated at length about media literacy. Thank you, Dr. Amit Ranjan. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Professor Sanjit Vedi, sir. And uh, thanks a lot, Professor Anubhuti Yadav, madam. Thank, thank you. you so, thank you.
Thank you to all the viewers who have connected with NCRT for this particular live interactive session. So uh, stay tuned and keep watching Evidya channels. Next up we have Sahayog, guidance for mental well-being and psychosocial support for all the students and viewers watching our session. And before wrapping up this conversation, again the important piece of information regarding G20 for all of you. We are proud that India assumed the G20 presidency and will convene the G20 leader summit for the first time in the country in this year. That's 2023. The nation is deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism. India's G20 presidency will be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play a major role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of everyone and in doing so manifest the true spirit of Vasudev Kutumbakam or the world is one family. Thanks a lot once again for connecting with us and stay tuned with us and keep watching Evidya channels. We'll be right back within few minutes. Namaskar.